it's, it's very uh, heartwarming to hear, hear my husband speak about it because I'm thinking about how our personal household operates. And when you marry someone, you bring with you your frame of reference and your experiences. And just as he said in terms of being um, having a mother being conscious that you need to know how to iron your clothes, you need to know how to do these things because you don't want a woman to uh, have to do these things. And for me, uh, it was my father to say that you don't have to do these things, you'll have a maid. And the maid hasn't gotten there yet, you know? So I did have to learn how to do some right. things very quickly within the household, within the frame of having two children. We have two daughters. And, um, and to understand that even though I'd gone to college and gone to law school, that there were certain expectations of a woman that, in terms of maintaining her household. So I had to totally uh, regroup and to try to understand now what will make my household work. I mean, it's, it's just... And what was the impact of these changes? Because I really hear you both work with the change. What was the impact on your marriage? Adjustments. The transformation. Book. The book, right? The, book. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the transformation, the understanding that... Um, and then it, there came a time when I wanted to do some certain things and I wanted to be able to to cook the dinner and, and do certain things but so I really got in there and learned how to do it just the same approach that I took to education to reading to understanding yes. that's the same thing you know I'd be in there with a, a, a recipe book you know, I, okay, how many times do we do this with the cornbread you know right. <laughs> you know right. but but I wanted to do it and there was that desire and there has to be a willingness within the person um, not just just to become you spoke about roles uh, to become fixated with a role and not have a a working marriage you know there are some so what you're saying is that you made the marriage more important than the role yes yes absolutely absolutely because it was it's just germane to survival yes um, I understand. and to understand that and we have two daughters and and I I feel very strongly that as a beyond marriage and uh, as a parent that we are role models. Absolutely. And um, the way that um, our daughters watch us operate are the ways that they will have fixated in their minds as to what makes for a father. Exactly. And um, and that's very important to me. Yes. Um, so so that's you know. And we were recently at a christening of our little godson uh, down in Tallahassee, Florida, and his grandmother said, I want to speak to the parents. Mm -hmm. She said, your baby, and dad was holding a little tiny baby, your baby is a miniature recording device. <laughs> and he's going to learn about love by watching how you love each other. Mm -hmm. So that really is mm -hmm. very much what you're saying, mm -hmm. that your daughters are watching, They're watching and learning. This is one of the things that we were talking about. From your perspective, what is the most important thing that as adults and as people in a couple, we can teach our children about love. What's, what's the thing you would want your daughters to learn from you about a loving partnership? I would want my daughters to learn to love themselves first. I feel oh. that <laughs> if, <laughs> let, me, let me dap you up on that. Yes. If you, two daughters also. Yes, yes, <laughs> if you love yourself, then you have the capacity to love someone else. Um, I feel that it is so important to understand that love is action. Um, I, my grandmother is 91 years old, and I spent a lot of time with her, actually. My four-year-old asked, where did you go to preschool? Did you go to this school? I was like, I went to my grandma's house. That was my preschool. Mm -hmm. And so I, she said, um, she, she often says, love is action. So that's what I'm telling my daughters love is action so if they do something I say mommy I love you and that little sweet little loving voice yeah. and I say well if you love mommy then you'll act properly if you love mommy you'll do these things at school mm -hmm. properly you will represent me because yes. if you are away from me and people see you act in a certain way then they'll say oh she's that woman is not teaching her daughter mm -hmm. I said that is love to me and then they look and like okay I think mm -hmm. I understand mm -hmm. so so love is action and, and I would want them to know that they should love themselves and then they can have the capacity to love someone else. And as, as far as um, uh, teaching that, I would also say that it's important in mate selection. Mm -hmm. That the person that you say 
that you love, the person that you say that you are going to marry, the person that you're going to be with, that that person is one that is the epitome of what you are because you are a reflection of that person. And so I would uh, definitely just let them know that they have a responsibility in the mate selection. Mm -hmm. That if there's certain characteristics that they see in another person, that they cannot change that person, that that's who that person is. Right. So. And that is one thing. Uh, hmm. <laughs> sorry, I resonate ahead, with that one. Go ahead, go ahead, go just had a conversation let's, let's with one of my daughters up. about a, <laughs> about a selection mm -hmm. uh, she was making, and it's it's very difficult because I think for young women mm -hmm. the idea of self love and how that motivates mm -hmm. what I will and won't allow mm -hmm. in my life and on my journey it's it's really you know we've been going through that our our children are old enough to be in the close to the mate selection mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. 25 23 19 and 14 mm -hmm. so they're moving right into that yes it's a lot of conversation <coughs> But one of the things that you touched on the book that had a lot of resonance for us is you went back into the history. Mm -hmm. You talk about the Ma'afa, you talk about the journey that we went on as a people in the Middle Passage, and that that plays a role. And of course, that struck such a big chord in me because my second mm -hmm. book, What Mama Couldn't Tell Us About Love, is all about how we heal. Mm -hmm. And when we went out to publish the book, even though our first book was published by Amistad Press, which was a black publisher, we could not get a black publisher to publish the book. All the black publishers said, slavery has nothing to do with us today. The woman who published our book is Jewish, from Harper Collins, mm -hmm, New York. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She called up and said, I want you to know why I'm publishing the book because my family went through the Holocaust, mm. and I recognize everything mm. Mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. Right, right. And I was like, if people understood we've been through a Holocaust, right. that there's a trauma that we're healing, but that trauma comes home. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It comes yes. home and it affects our relationships. So yes. can you talk a little more about how you see that? Well, that you bring up a good point. That's, the, that's one, of the, one of the biggest challenges that we ran into in trying to publish in, in, other, in publishing houses because of being afraid of the research that we have. Secondly, being afraid of the, the ma'afa or the enslavement experience. Um, and those things challenge uh, publishers because they're trying to figure out, well, uh, people don't want to read about research and it's like, we can't have a discussion about who we are without having some basis that grounds our discussion. So we thought, we thought about bringing in research and then also we said we cannot talk about who we are without looking at what's in the mix, you know, in, from Louisiana in the gumbo, oh, yeah. right? What's, oh, yeah. what's in the gumbo, right? What's, what's in there? So we asked, is, is, is seafood is a chicken gumbo, right? So, so, that, so, so the question becomes, what's in our gumbo? What, what, what's there? And so we looked at the, at the Ma'afa, the enslavement experience of African people. And, of course, we, we knew that people made decisions around mates because of skin color, uh, hair, and, and all of those things had their beginnings in the enslavement experiment. Right. Size. And, right, 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 height, right, right. And so we because it was a breeding experience. A breeding process. Right. And, so, and so we started to say, well, look, this, this has to be in the discussion. Mm -hmm. That is, what role did in the enslavement experience play in us defining who we are? Uh, and then how does it play itself out in expressing itself right now in who we be? Yes. Because those things are, are continuous. We did not have a healing period. There was, there, there, there was no period where, where the enslavement experience was over, that. and then they said, now normalize yourselves back to where you would have been prior to this, this experience. Right. On top of that, we have a consistent uh, notion of Africanity, African essence, that never was destroyed. So you have all of these, these variables inter, interplaying within, within people trying to make choices in the now moment. So we often have these very, um, I, I say we, we, we have very surface level uh, discussion about very deep structured phenomena. Mm -hmm. And so we try to have well in what the problem is that he won't do this and she won't do this. Some of that junk is based on stuff that we've never healed from. Mm -hmm.